All right. Welcome back to the Crease Dive Podcast. Today is Thursday, April 8th in the year 2024. My name is Dukes. I'm joined as always by the great Matthew Nestler. Nest, how's it going? Going well, Dukes. Uh, halfway through the week. Excited for some more lacrosse to be on this weekend. Thought we had a good show in last weekend. Um, just sort of chugging along day by day. Can't can't wait for it to be May. I, lo- I love some playoff lacrosse. I love the tournament. Love seeing teams sneak in with conference bids. We're, we're almost there. We're, we're getting to the end, which is the best part. I don't want it to end, but the end the, the end is the best. So we're getting there. How about yourself? How you feeling? How's everything? Good. I feel like I had a pretty good week uh, gambling on the games. Uh, from from what I took, I think that uh, overall is a great weekend for the cross. This is the type. This is the time of year you want to start. You want to you want to play your best ball in May. This is when you st- want to start playing your best ball. This is when you want to st- start to podcast the best you can. So uh, I- I'm locked in. I'm locked and loaded. I'm Davis Clark locked in, shitting my pants at the Boston Marathon. I am laser focused. I don't know if you caught that guy. Great. Did you one, catch of, that guy? one of the craziest videos I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean. I've seen that guy, and I don't know what his what his shtick is. It seems like it's working, but that video was preposterous. It was out. It was out of this world, and when he just like goes down to his legs, he's just covered in shit. And uh, yeah, I mean, I respect it. He 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 was running hard, so you know, tip my cap to that guy. He went mega viral. Yeah, I don't even think it's a bit because I know like now I'm like preparing for like the marathons and shit, and they always talk about like I guess if you do like long distance running, like you're more susceptible to like shit your pants. Now I've never shit my pants when running, but I've seen. So let me just sh- I'm gonna show. So for anybody that doesn't know, there's this guy who's like a Tony P and DC character. Like I'd say like the uh, like another side of Tony P. He's like his whole thing is being locked in, laser focused. He's fucking like. I don't even know. He, he's hilarious. Like I think it's one of those things you just either get or you don't. And a bunch of people do get it. He's been viral, and he just ran the Boston Marathon, and he shit in his pants. Oh, let me pull up the video. Actually, the video is so goddamn funny. <laughs> I wonder. If, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear it or not, but uh, here, let me just pull that up. It's so funny. See everything I have for the people. Two fifty six. I share my pants like crazy. I'm going after it all day, every day for the people. Drivers 56 minutes, man, people. Were you able to hear that? <laughs> yeah, I could hear it on my end. All right, let me just say, for anybody, it's, it's just, I can't even tell if that's shit or not. Like, I want to be that locked in at the beer garden all summer long, where I'm just shitting my pants. Like, I don't even have time to go to the bathroom. Like, it's just, I'm so locked in on just guzzling beers that, like, I don't even have time to think about shitting. <laughs> like, I just do it right there. But shout out to him. Shout out to him. Shout out to Davis Clark. But speaking of locked in, let's lock into these games. Let's 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 start talking about these games. I don't really want to die. I want to get into the Sunday games last. Uh, I think those were probably the most exciting games of the weekend. I think it's only fair that I have to swallow some pride and admit when I'm wrong. Syracuse didn't cover. Yeah, I mean, they, it was three to nothing. UNC thought a cover was – I was on Syracuse as well. Thought a cover was very far away from happening. And then Syracuse goes on a 10-to-1 run. <clears throat> 10-4, fourth quarter, I think, maybe end of, end of the third. End of third. And, I mean, UNC just kind of for one quarter just took it to Cuse again. They did two ga- a game of two massive runs. And uh, they didn't come close to covering. You could feel it happening. Once it was 10-7, I was like, this just – I didn't think it was going to be 10-9. I didn't yeah, think I, dis- was- I disagree with you to an extent. I disagree okay. with you to an extent. What do you got? So I, I think that Syracuse clearly – like, they were not a team. So you could tell there's some opportunities that they had, like, four on three breaks and they just decided to hold up. Like, they weren't playing for the cover. They weren't playing to, like, try to, like – get early goals early in the shot clock. There were a team that was like, let's use the shot clock with lim- limit UNC's possessions, which I think is smart to win the game. Now, will I have that in my mind now that Syracuse isn't like, they're not for the cover? Yeah. I don't think they're FTC. I, I think that they, that was a little pansy shit uh, from like a gambling perspective. The smart decision was probably to do what they did, but I didn't know if you kind of noticed that as well. 
Um, in, in the fourth quarter, I mean, they just didn't go. Like they they had some opportunities, but again, it was like late in the shot clock. Like there's, I, I can vividly remember like the ball being on the camera side of the field when Syracuse gets it. Like after like riding and getting back in possession, and they could have pushed, but they decided to hold up. But interested to hear. Yeah, too. I mean, I I hear what you're saying. I I think you know that can be a good strategy, but at what point are you like, are you like begging to have a team just it, it, UNC scores one more goal? Now all of a sudden you're knotted up with no momentum. You know, I don't even think. Don't get me wrong. I will be keeping that as mine as well. But I just think at a certain point they took their foot off the gas too much. I mean, if a team like UNC can go on a run like that against Qs, who is you know in my opinion has like one of the best defenses they've had in a while. You know, like just like overall with Will Mark, you know, holding down the back. Uh, you, you can't put yourself out there as a team that can give up a a, a six goal run, a five goal run to anyone. I mean, it's just. That's the beauty of lacrosse. It can flip like that. Luckily, it worked out for them. They won. But, yeah, I mean, I guess they can't knock them too much. They, they won the game. That's all that matters. But at a certain point, you got to be like, shit, we were up six goals and we won by one and didn't score a goal for almost 20 minutes. So Yeah, I agree with that. I think that, like, I it's mean, it's uh, it's like in football when you, like, when you start calling plays scared. It's like you don't want to play too, like, too, too conservative to take yourself out of, like, what's, what's working for you. Now, I will say, like, I think that just, like, that strategy has worked for Syracuse. So you shouldn't go away from, like, what – what, what's been working for them? They should stick to, which I think that's what they've been doing for a majority of the season. Like it doesn't seem like they're like too much of like, like I consider Cornell right now a little bit of like a run and gun team. Yeah, like I wouldn't say like I think Syracuse could do that if they want, but like they they, they can have like, they have the versatility. But it seems like they're playing a little bit more conservative on both ends of the field, like very efficient offensively when they like. But I don't know. I think their defense is really good. I think that like that's what, like separates them from like the years that they were struggling, but um, again, I'm overall impressed by Syracuse. I, I It's just fascinating to me with like the young talent that UNC has in that freshman class, like Petromala, Owen Duffy. I think Owen Duffy's a stud. Like it's just going to be very intriguing. I think Nest is the word. Very intriguing to see what they can do when they get a new head coach next year. Like, will they hit the portal? Will they stay with the new coach? That's just one thing I'm looking out for now, but I'm done with the brushy slander. For now, I I just it, it's like clearly the talent's there. That like that's why the most frustrating part is like the talent. It's not like they like aren't bringing in studs. Like they have studs. So yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I, I agree with. You. I think that Owen Duffy kid is he he's gonna be like if he's not already up there with, with the top kids in the country, he's he's gonna be there. He's every time I looked at the UNC game, he he was scoring or doing something. He also just looks like a grown man, like. Like him being a freshman, you would never – if you just, like, looked at UNC play, you'd be like, there's no way that kid's a freshman. I mean, he's, yeah. he's a grown man out there. So, shout out to Duffy. Uh, would tell you to transfer to Cabrini, but you can't. So, stay in UNC. Yeah. And, I, I like, again, I, I said this in the beginning of the season, but, like, I need to have uh, – like, I like Colin Creek's got to be in, like, the PLL conversation as a goalie. I don't know if he's a grad student or he has, like, one more year next year. But I, I would firmly put him on as, like, one of the best goalies that I've seen. And I just think that, like, if he was on any different team in the ACC that's been, like, thriving the last couple of years, it, it would be – he'd be a top – he'd be right there with Entman, in my opinion. So I just think that him being on UNC has almost hurt his draft stock because he was a big name when he had, like, Will Perry and all of them uh, when they made the Final Four run and then in the years that they dipped. And I don't think it's necessarily his fault. I think that he's uh, kind of the – product of bad product i guess on the field but yeah that's that's talking syracuse unc hopefully uh it was a good game i, I will i will give them that they gave me a sweat i want i want north carolina fans you had me nervous you had you had me in the second half not gonna lie um let's see what else we're gonna talk i watched penn harvard that that turned into an exciting fourth quarter game i know harvard tied it at 12 and then penn ran away with it uh not ran away with it but they they took a, a two goal lead and Harvard had the chance to like make it a one goal game with a minute left. There was a controversial off the pipe goal. It was no goal. It wasn't controversial, but um, I think the play of the game, did you see that save? Yeah, uh, I love it. I love a good hustle play. It should, my only knock with it is like they were, the game was kind of over and I respect it. It's just, it would have been fucking awesome if that had happened in like the third quarter when they were kind of battling at that point. It was kind of like a wash. 
I believe wow, it. I just I completely disagree with that. I love it. Here we go. Let's get it. Like what, what, that I, because this they were only down. Harvard was only down two at this point, and after this at this save led to the off the pipe like they had like they had an opportunity to go down one with a minute to go. Yeah, like if, they, okay. if that goal if that goal transferred, like it's not like it was like a three goal game like th- twenty okay. seconds to go. Okay, like, you're right. That led right. that led to a very controversial spot. And I I hate saying the word controversial, but I'm I can't stop. It's in my head. Controversial. Yeah. Like it was all like the re- it had to be reviewed by refs. The refs had to review the goal, so that's why it's controversial in my head. But um, um all right, yeah, I, 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 I digress. Right, it led to an opportunity. Yeah. Um, uh, fair, fair, fair. But no, that was that was nasty. I love. I'm like the the biggest fan of hustle. Uh, that's just. Pure Are hustle. you? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my that's my whole that's my whole brand hustle. Because I sent the tweet off Barstool Sports is for the for the crease time. I, I sent that tweet out. And I just want to. I when I saw you saw you said like big for the brand. I I would just I would think that I said I said save the years and from even from a goalie. I think that you're taking the stance like well you got to look at the goalie product. You're taking like you're, you're offended that the goalie didn't make the save of the year. <laughs> no, I said big yeah. for the brand. I was all over it. I no, yeah. I'm, I'm I love that. I don't think. I, I think it's up there for saving the year. I think it. I, my biggest knock was that it was late. Maybe I thought it was later than it was. Um, but I mean, if you're, you're also scoreboard watching a little bit, like if you like, you know, there's a lot, a lot of games to watch, and if you're running around was, on a Saturday, I was trying to see that cute. I was going back for between Cuse and that game. Right. And I was trying to. I was trying to win both. Harvard. I, I had money line. Shout out to yeah, Rapkins. Cuse had to cover, so it was like a a flip flop. I was too. I, I did see it. But um, no, I, I I like that you fired off that tweet. That was huge. I mean, there's nothing that makes me happier than when the the monster that is Barstool and their official Twitter account or official Instagram account does anything lacrosse related, does anything Dukes related. It just brings a big smile to my face, and and so I had to hop in there. But I thought you were about to tell me I didn't I didn't interact with her like snubbed it or something. I was like, no, I was on it. I was all over it. Yeah, I was just like, you probably like, you probably like, oh, like, bad for the goalie product. Entman's on the hot seat. Well, uh, <laughs> well this guy be would be number one off the board. Yeah, I'm not that much of a goalie dick rider. I love the tendies, but if I like, I feel like I'm a straight shooter. I'm obviously biased. I love goalies more than you do, which is fine. I'll be the goalie lover, but I'm. I don't think I'm a goalie dick rider. I think that's where we draw the line between love and being a dick rider. I love it. I'm giving you shit. Um, going around. Speaking of teams, you know what? Fuck, I, I meant to get Larkin. I meant to get Larkin on uh, Jordy with Jordy. I know he, Jordy might be coming on soon, but Brown upsets Princeton thirteen to twelve. I feel like we gotta give him a little bit of shout out. Yeah, I mean, we said it earlier. I think when they were one and six, uh, potentially the best one and six team in the history of lacrosse. Um, they're they're good. Brown fights. I think it's like Brown's a team that's just going to recruit like good players. Like there's talent on Brown. Um, just a rough year for them. Uh, love to see him go get a gritty win. Love that they're still fighting. I wonder, I, again, I don't know how the conference tournaments work out. I know some conferences, like everyone makes it. I know some conferences, like a sliver of them make it. So I don't know how the Ivy league tournament works. I don't know if they'll get a shot to play in that. If they do, I think the Ivy is legitimately the most upper grabs uh, conference in the it, or be the history of lacrosse. It is insane how many teams could just like just go on. It's you need to win three or four games, and all of a sudden you're dancing in the tournament. I, I have no idea. I have no idea who's <laughs> good and who's not good. Like I, I, I'm so blinded by Harvard. Like Sam, but I Sam King is so good. Yeah, you you've 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 pushed that Sam King train pretty far. He's, he's and he and I think he's all like he's so good that he's altering my brain on how a good Harvard actually is. No, I I think you've been pretty good on Harvard's been really good. I don't think that's like a uh like placebo effect if that's even the right use of that word. Yeah, but I like think- it's like it's like who's good and who's not. Like I I think that like like cuz again, in lacrosse it's so weird like yeah, like if you're top twenty, you're good. But are you good? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, are you good or yeah, are you just like, good? Like, is 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 a team in the Ivy that's not in the top twenty better than like Sacred like, Heart? Like, 
like 15 to 20, like, yeah, yeah. That's some that that's some Sacred Hearts. That was some Sacred Heart slander right there. But yeah, like, would Brown beat Sacred Heart? Yeah, every day of the week. I am so confident in that. Like, and honestly, if they're not, like, <laughs> no, I'm joking. But like, no. <laughs> um, but but Hart, like, I, I don't even like 15 to 20 in the in the top 20 to me. It's like, okay, you're you're decent. Yeah. I'm top with five, you. top four, you're great. Five to ten, it's like whatever and then like the 10 to like yeah. 12 is like you probably you could probably like you're an upset like i don't know like there's like very rarely like i don't know the, the, the top 20 what, lacrosse is so weird for me i see what you're saying i'm trying to actually pull up the just wanna pull, also really quick let's just talk about when you pull up like the top 20 the ivy leagues and stuff let's talk about it. did you see this did you catch this sienna manhattan ending oh my god yeah yeah that was uh were, were, were they all in the Ladies last and- Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, one of the most absurd comebacks you will ever see in your life. Manhattan's up 10-7 with 50 seconds to go. And Sienna came back and scored four motherfucking goals in 50 seconds. Or 48 seconds, technically. To win the fucking ball game. Or 44 seconds, whatever the fuck it was. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it would be 44 seconds because... Eight, nine, ten, eleven. But holy shit, Nest! Best comeback you ever. Best come. Like it doesn't get better than this, right? I think this is. The I, Cabrini the did not have a fucking better no, comeback. No, 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 no. No, we don't. It's not Cabrini related. This is actually like deep in my lacrosse bag. Uh, there was a team. I'll have to find it. Uh, in the state championship, I don't think it was Jersey. It might have been Penn. I don't know where the fuck it was. It was probably five, six years ago. They were down by like four or five goals late. And this kid by himself went on a run similar to this. I think it was a minute 20, and they rattled off like five to win it. I'm going to do a deep dive before the episode and get like the exact statistics, but that's exactly what this reminded me of. This being college – you know, I'll probably go with this one, maybe be a little better, but at the same time in a state championship to do something similar to that, that's pretty fucking nuts. I'll get the schools. It's not like Bush League. Uh, no, I like, kind of, I'm somewhat remembering what you're saying. I can't yeah, it, it was, it was like some legit lacrosse being played, and this kid just went on an absolute tear. Um, so it looks like four teams make the Ivy League tournament. And there are seven Ivy League teams. So, obviously, Brown and Dartmouth are out. It looks like Harvard might not even make the tournament because because they're one and three. They would need – I'd have to check the schedule. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be either Princeton. Princeton and Harvard the same overall record, but Princeton has – I know what it was. I got it. It It was Ward Melville, wasn't it? it Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew it was a Long Island school. Yeah, so that's that's legit lacrosse, right? If I'm not mistaken, legit. Ward Melville is one of the best programs in Long Island. Exactly. Yeah, it's like one of the craziest things I've. I, and I, I, you, do you have like the article or anything? What does it say happened at the end? I. So they were down nine four. They were down nine four. I got. I got to find this. This is. I'll find the article. I saw the. I saw the video. I insane five. Yeah, Ward Melville insane five goal comeback to become New York champs. That is. Fucking insane. nuts, dude! It's, that's the only thing I've ever seen like that Sienna shit. And the and the part like if it was just a normal high school game, I wouldn't probably ever remember it. But for a state dude, championship, holy that, shit! I think like one kid scored like four or five goals too. Like he was just ripping cheddars. Oh my god, dude! This is insane. Pittsburgh was playing in its first boys lacrosse state championship game. Oh, I think it was Gr- Grillo, maybe. I remember that. Okay, this is crazy. I'm gonna pull it. I'm gonna pull it up for the people. Log into YouTube right now. Stop what you're doing. Log into YouTube. Um. So the top ranked Class A team in the state, now winners of non state champion state championships, were down nine four with four twenty six remaining when Eddie Munez scored with one oh one to go. Borden Millville was still down at nine to six. We had a three-goal lead with a minute left, and we panicked, and it hurt us. Pittsburgh, Coach Andrew Whipple. 
There was, dude, that's insane in high school across with no shot clock. Insane. They they just won. They must have won every face off and just got. I, I they won every face off and went down and scored. Yeah. Okay. So like basically the the, the shot clock, the face off actually because they're so dominant the face off X. Pittsburgh couldn't chew the clock. Damn, that is fucking crazy. Scored 34 seconds to go. Won the next face-off. Scored 27 seconds left to go. Won another face-off. And scored the time goal with eight ticks on the clock. For That's good measure, he, he won the next face-off with eight, like, with eight seconds to go. Won down, almost won the game. They won in overtime. So I think because they didn't win in overtime, this one's a little bit crazier. Fair. Who's the fuck? Wow. <clears throat> yeah. So I, I good, uh, good call back to that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I it rang a bell for a second. I thought it was Garden City. That would have been, sure nuts. that would have been sick. We just win, we just destroy, conquer. Yeah, don't, Garden, need, Garden don't need, City come, would don't need come back. We would never come out to Jersey, though. We, we literally just beat Bridgewater Raritan. Yeah. Okay. Well, come on, to, come on through Morris County. I'll set it up with Shadow. To Chatham? Bring it to Chatham. Chatham. Bring it to Cougar Field. To Chatham? We don't want to get Chatham to work. Come on. Chatham's a good pro- – Chatham's good. We, we want to give Summit that smoke. You can give Summit that smoke. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with we that. We want to give Summit that smoke. Um, yeah. Denver, great cover. Great cover. Great cover for Denver. I mean, that's a, that's a program – that's a program altering cover for them. Would you say? <laughs> for Denver? For, yeah, you you have to think that like Joey Spolino is he a bust? Hard to say after not covering, but Denver on the opposite hand, like because of that cover against Georgetown. Yeah, I, that's also just huge for for our, the George the Creech that Georgetown narrative. You know, I actually saw someone talk about you know how far is Georgetown going to go, and it just made me think about. That big win at Notre Dame, you know, Dukes put out his thoughts and what he thinks is going to happen, what's happened in the past with Georgetown. So, yeah, I I don't know. It's tough, tough for Georgetown. They were on it. We brought it up last week. They were on like a sneaky heater, maybe not against the best teams in the world, but to rattle off, I think, seven or eight in a row is always good. They went like a month and a half without losing, maybe two months. But, yeah. Yeah, that's a huge cover. One, one and a half is a, a dangerous game to play in lacrosse. You just never know if you're going to get that second. Uh, so a 10-8 cover, you know, shout out the Denver boys out there. Skipping over some games we're not really going to talk about, but, like, it happened, and we saw it. <laughs> Maryland beat Rutgers, tuned in and out of that game. Like, that, that it's crazy that, to me, that we're talking about in 2024, like, that being, like, a meh game for me. Like, one that, like, I'm not all the way locked in on. Yeah, I mean, Rutgers just hasn't showed up as much as I'd like them to in big games. They have good players. It's just, I don't know. I mean, their goalies played nasty in some games. They have these two young kids who have won, like, Big Ten Players of the Week, like, fucking, like, seven times. So I don't know why Rutgers isn't just, like, a little bit better. Maybe maybe we've just been – maybe we've just been a sound asleep on Maryland and they're just going to fuck us over come tourney time like they do every year and just go on another run. Yeah, I think, obviously, like, Rutgers has Shane Noblock and Ross Scott. I think Noblock will be drafted in the PLL. I think Ross Scott will probably be like uh, Charlie Vitas, where, like, the chaos when they're fucking, like, have to sit, like, everyone because of, like, visas or some shit, like, Ross Scott yeah. will get signed. Um, I, he's one of my. He's been one of my favorite players to watch for Rutgers. It's just crazy to see these names and like how dominant they were at one point. But um, yeah, that's a game that I, I watched, saw it happened. It happened. Rucker, uh, Maryland won. Maryland covered. Uh, Army Navy. Not much to talk about there. Army won by five. But the storyline is that was the most attended lacrosse game so far this year. Like ten thousand somewhat folks came yep, to watch play. Sure. That's awesome. Um, another cover this weekend that I had. That the game did in fact happen, and it was a great time to take a nap. Jacksonville versus Lindenwood, twenty to five, easy cover. I'm telling you, I think I think Lindenwood is caught like fading. Lindenwood might be easy pickings at this point. I'll be honest. Uh, I bet on Lindenwood early in the season. They covered, I think, twice for me. I haven't bet on them since, and I know they've been on the wrong end of a lot of covers. 
So I don't want to sit here and act like Lindenwood's been fucking me over. But I am in your corner, Lindenwood. That's and hilarious that you say that. What'd you say? Because that's hilarious you say that because I've placed two bets against Lindenwood this year. And they hit. And easily. So <laughs> now in my head, I'm like, oh, easy pickings. So it's so yeah. funny that's like opposite for you. Like yeah, I think I it was the last two weeks. I hit them real early. One of their games, I bet on them getting like an absurd amount of goals, maybe 12 yeah. and a half they covered. Yeah. Um, a, no, I fucking scary. hate Jacksonville. Again, they snubbed me. I'm snubbing them now. You know, if you're a kid of Jacksonville, I don't hate you, but I, I don't fuck with your team. So it is. I like it. Jacksonville a lot. Shout out Galloway. Yeah. Me and Galloway may need to hash this out one day. Maybe never saw the email, but I just find it. Find it hard to believe, Galloway. I used to, I used to look up to you, Galloway. You know, like they say, never meet your heroes. Damn. I know it's and tough. You know what? Poor Nestler's like little nephew is going to hear be hearing these drunk ramblings about Galloway in about thirty years. Oh yeah, fucking, don't get me wrong. Uh, fucking Galloway. Yeah, get Good me. Makes you wonder. <laughs> Galloway answers my email, and I and I and I, and I end up in Jacksonville. Maybe Cabrini never goes under. So you just never know. Maybe Duke never gets upset like Maybe two years ago. <laughs> butterfly effect is, effect is tremendous, you know. Duke Duke misses the tournament. Notre Dame misses the tournament. Yeah. The butterfly yeah. effect. Jacksonville goes then, on. And then Notre Dame, Dame wins the national championship the next year. Wow. Yeah, it's it's crazy. What Again, I, I think I'm going to need to sit down and talk to him. I know he's done a lot for the game of lacrosse, you know, legendary goalie. Just he knew he – all he had to do was answer my email. He knew the email was coming. I had the I had the inside scoop. He knew I was calling. It's got to answer, man. You can't leave Nest unread. You know, that doesn't sit well with me. I'll be thinking about that until I'm, like Duke said, until I'm 65 years old. Let's talk about the Sunday games. Oh, yeah. Um, some great games. Let's talk about Duke, Virginia first. Obviously, we're looking at two players that could be considered to be the number one draft picks in the PL draft. You know, I think that O'Neal's kind of struggled. Against big time opponents this year, in the in like the four like t- top ranked games, Duke wins eighteen to twelve against Virginia. What's what's what stood out to you? What stood out to me was uh, Virginia always didn't play great. We said noon noons his his highs really high. It's about controlling your lows. Yeah, I'm sure he knows that more than anyone. He's a great goalie, but when your low is you know, not saving the ball and, and and getting yanked, you know, puts the other goalie in a bad spot, puts your team in a bad spot. I don't think the other goalie played really good for Virginia. I think at one point they said, like, the Duke goalie had, like, seven or eight saves and Virginia had, like, two when it was, like, ten to something. Uh, so just not a good show for the Virginia, Virginia keepers. I'm sure they'll they'll fix it up. I still love the Cavaliers, fake Cavaliers. Real ones are behind me. Uh, but, no, I, I think Virginia is going to be okay. I think Duke – kind of needed this one to tell everyone like, Hey, we're still, we're still Duke, you know, Brandon O'Neill casual five, um, five points at two teams deep. And when their goalie gets hot, you know, it's hard to score on them. That, that goalie's good. I, I, I believe he's the freshman still balling out there. He's been playing the whole season. So, so we'll see, but, but Brandon O'Neill with a, a big, big showing in a big game. What about you? Yeah. I think that you saw the Matthew Nunes effect. I mean, Got pulled in the first quarter. And I, I've been saying Nunes is good. Nunes is flashy. Nunes will make you like bite your tongue. But he has these games where he just fucking can't save a beach ball. And Duke's one of his fucking kryptonite, in my opinion. I think he had seven goals, seven shots, it's like shots faced in the first. Dude, sorry to cut you off. Duke's beaten Virginia 18 fucking times in a row in the regular season. And yeah, I, I, was... I, I didn't hear about that once somehow. Yeah, I knew, I knew that like. I knew it's been a while. I didn't know it's 2004. That's, I think like since it's there's some crazy stat that I found. Let me just pull up. That is fucking, it's like since. Go ahead. Since 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 Virginia last beat Duke in the regular season, <laughs> they've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Final Fours. And they've won the championship Three. four times. That's fucking insane to me. I wonder how many times they've beaten Duke in the postseason. I know they beat them when they made their when they made one of their runs recently. Um, 
But yeah, sorry to cut you off there. It's just like I, that came right. They beat Duke. Head. They beat they beat Duke in the championship last year. They beat Duke. Oh no, no, sorry, 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 sorry. They beat Duke in the Final Four in nineteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at that game, maybe at the link. Virginia, uh, I was too. Virginia, let me see. Virginia versus Duke, NCAA tournament across. Let's see if we can just look that up really quick. Okay, no, I don't think I could find it. And it wasn't just right away. All right. Um, but yeah, I think that like Matthew Nunes got pulled in the first first quarter because he had seven shots faced, didn't save a fucking shot. Lars pulls and puts in the redshirt freshman Kyle Morris, who I think will be a good goalie eventually, but you're getting thrown into a game. You don't expect to probably see some shots and yeah. you're facing fucking that gauntlet that Duke has like Brendan O'Neill. And you're, it's like your first real significant playing time in a big time game. So I think he's in an unfair position to actually judge him. So I'll give yeah. him the benefit of the doubt. Didn't play great. I mean, if you're, if this was any other goalie, I'd probably say like shit, but um, I don't know. I think coming in cold, not getting like the full like starter warm ups, I think that matters. Yeah, I mean, it's he, like he, a little bit. He, he probably hadn't seen a shot in a half hour, if that. And, and it just it, and and just but but like also like the fact that you're going into a nationally ranked game against yeah. Duke and you're playing legitimately the world games MVP <laughs> and you're playing all like it, I just think it's like an unfair position to really judge someone being like they suck or they're good. I don't think a lot of people like that's a that's he was in a position to fail. The only thing he could do is like surprise people, and he didn't surprise anybody. But I'm not going to judge him. <laughs> I think I think Shelly Shelly's really good. I I just think that the goalies at the end of the day dug 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 Virginia too big of a hole. Yeah, yeah, and Virginia fought. I mean, there were points where I was like, "Oh shit, Virginia is about to catch him." And every time I flip back and forth, uh, I was watching. Uh, was that during the Masters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was flipping between that and the Masters. Um, it just Duke just kept, kept every time I turned the screen, Duke was like celebrating a goal, and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. well, you're not gonna catch him that way." But yeah, so what is nasty? Yeah, dude, that Duke again. Like, I'm scared. I'm not scared because I guess I haven't been like anti Duke, but like those that that team is so fucking good, and because they haven't been great, it's like, dude, they're just ch- maybe they're just charging up for May. You know, no, the the best teams in the country know that. February, March, and April don't mean shit. Legitimately means nothing. All that matters is how you play in May. That's it. Yeah, and I hope uh, for Duke's sake, as we get into May, that they have one of their best players, uh, Jake Naso. Like, I don't know. I know he went down. I don't know how injured he is. I don't know if he was out for, like, a majority of the game. Cause I, I, but I saw him go down. Hope that he's okay. I don't know if it was minor or whatnot, but hoping hoping the best for him in any case that it is. Because you don't even want like even if he's at eighty percent right now, you want you want one of the best players on your team to be a hundred percent going into uh, the, the biggest part of the season. I hate to circle back on your guy, the, the Tendy from UNC. That you you know, I, I don't want to say he's not a PLL goalie. I, I do think he he's really good. I think the one they went on in in twenty two was awesome. Since then, though, he, he hasn't been great. I mean, he saved the ball at 48% a clip last year. I But I'm telling you, I think it's like a, the effect of playing like in front of like a young defense. All right. I'm fair. Fair. Again, like I don't. Like, it's I, like you're, you're in a, you're in a total, you're going from playing as a freshman where you're like, you have like, you have a championship level team. Yeah. You have like pro players in front of him. And then you got it. Like you're a freshman. Then you're going to a sophomore where like, you don't have to be the leader in that defense as a freshman. And then as a sophomore, you've got to like basically be like the guy or like a junior as the guy. So yeah, I, I think it's like an unfair position to really like judge him. Like, yeah, I mean stats, stats some usually don't lie, but I mean they can tell the wrong story. Uh, so so I'll I'll take Dukes' word. I haven't watched enough UNC. <clears throat> I haven't done a deep enough dive on him. So I'm not gonna not gonna slander name. I hope I hope I see in the PLL one day and, and Dukes can uh, tip his cap and say he was right. So good luck to good luck to Colin Creek. Yeah, I mean, he was one of the best goalies in high school and everything. I don't know. I think. Where is he from? Is he from Long Island? Do, do you... I think he was actually on. He might have been on that. Ward, Ward, Melville. Me- Ward Melville. He actually might have been. Yeah. That'd be funny as fuck if he was the goalie in that game. That actually would be very, very funny. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to him. Um. All right. Getting into the 
Notre Dame Cornell game. Notre Dame wins a run and gun game, eighteen to seventeen. Pray for the underbetters. Um, absolute shout out. I, I think more teams got to play on Long Island. That like it's like you have a bunch of Long Island guys on both these teams. Why not play a neutral site game? Just go to neutral sites where hotbeds are. I think it's the pros game. To, their jobs like I've seen people being like, come to the West Coast, blah blah. blah. No, create the best atmosphere you can. Notre Dame Cornell, Long Island's a hotbed. Long Island, you you recruit the hell out of there. Come play there. Come play in front of the families. Come play in front of the friends. Come make an exciting atmosphere and play in front of the recruits that you're trying to recruit. Um, like going to the West Coast, that's that's the pros games. The pros, the pros job is to grow the game. The college's game is to create the best atmosphere, and they should come to Long Island more because of that. I know they used to do shit at Beth Page all the time, uh, but it, it was an awesome, awesome atmosphere. Uh, CJ Curse is a fucking monster. Yeah, he's gonna be an absurd. He's gonna be an absurd pro. Absurd. Michael Long, really fucking good. Kelleher had an awesome day back on the island. Uh, but you know, Notre Dame is is just really, really fucking good. Is, really, really good. Is Cornell the first team this year to really pump Notre Dame? You know, with that many goals, like Notre Dame has done such a good job. Even even when they lost to Georgetown, I don't think it was that high scoring. Um. To to put up seventeen on Notre Dame, that's a pretty good, a pretty yeah. good feat. We knew Cornell was offense was really good, but again, it's that defense that's just gonna but they're they've been in so many shootouts that have been a, above fifteen goals. Yeah, I think that um, I think Notre Dame might have just fallen for Cornell's pace. Like there was just some easy fucking goals that Cornell was letting up, like easy fucking goals. It looked like Cornell didn't know at one point, like what what to do on defense. And I think when you're kind of falling into that like pace of an up and down game, like lots of shots, like I I don't know mentally, like I don't think Entman had his best games by game by any means. But when you're kind of going into that pace where you have like a like a four goal lead, like as a goalie, you're like all right, like maybe mentally, you're like all right, like that, like the next one's like you, you feel more comfortable. So I don't know. I think they, they kind of yeah. fell into Cornell's pace a little bit, which they shouldn't really want to do. Three out of four losses for Cornell, one goal games to top ranked teams. That's that's got to sting. But again, could see them walking into the Ivy tournament. It's kind of anyone's game there. Yeah. Mm, let's go to buy sell. Um, let's just do a quick buy sell. Like, if you had to buy buy something from the weekend, sell something upcoming, just in lacrosse. What you, what are you doing? I am buying. Back my Duke stock. I back in on Duke. Um, wasn't like out, out, just like thought they were underperforming, was just calling it like I saw it. Uh, yeah, back in. I think they're a team that is so dangerous, so scary. If Brent O'Neill can find his swagger, which I don't think he lost, I think it's just in the room, it's in the room with him. He's just like, hey, like, oh, is it under my pillow? Um, if he can play like that, and even I think he's capable of playing a lot better. Duke's going to be scary because he's surrounded by guys who can finish the rock, move the rock, and rip the shit out of the rock. The defense is legit. Goalie's legit. So give me back my Duke stock. I, I sold some of it just a little bit, but I'm, I'm buying it right. I'm back in before they before it explodes, uh, Dogecoin style. My sell? I knew who I was going to sell. I just forgot. It was – oh, <laughs> this is an easy sell because I was all right. I've been, I've been selling this stock all year. The Michigan Wolverines, man. I'm selling my Michigan stock. Oh, dude, just off the top of your head, could you guess Michigan's record? They played 12 games. Five and seven. Six and six. And you got to – I know I bring it up every time. That fucking coach put a giant bullseye on their back, and they've been getting – Molly whopped by teams. And I just find it hard to believe it's not like a like a, not a coincidence that, you know, they, they lost players. They lost really good players. Um, but these teams come in and they just want to beat the shit out of them. Like, I, I, if I'm a player, there's nothing that gets me more fired up than a coach that's, like, talking shit. If it's a player, that's fine. Like, I, I get that. But a coach talking shit, that's some fucking Stevenson scumbag lacrosse shit. If you're a coach – Put your head down, coach the boys, talk when you win. Don't put a target on your player's back. I think that's a scummy move as a coach, trying to like 
be this badass dude where in terms you like you make your team fucking just out to dry all the time. So I sold my Michigan stock. Shout out the boys there fighting, but your coach, man. I mean, I don't want to fight you, but you kind of a dickhead for that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't agree with that. I'm. I. I think that the like at some point you got to defend your conference. Like I don't remember the exact quote. I don't think he should have said it before the Virginia game. But like, I don't think that fucking like Penn State. I don't think anyone in the Big Ten's like would give a fuck what he said. They didn't put a target in his back for the Big Ten players. Like, why would anyone in the Big Ten just like? I think he's a great coach. I don't think he's a bad coach. I just think he like. I, I just think he's like. I just think it's too much talking. I think it's like an unnecessary quote. That maybe it's not even a target on his back, but now he just now it looks even dumber. Where like I was expecting Michigan when their coach said that to like come out and like bully the fuck out of teams, whatever conference it is, and they've just been getting bullied. I mean, and I think that that's where I just have an issue with it. Like they're getting kind of, bullied by teams. They're getting bullied by teams in their conference more than anything. Like I never would have thought they would beat Virginia. Never would have thought that they'd beat uh, Notre Dame. Harvard they lost by two, which I, I did. Like I guess I would pick Harvard in that one. It's not like. Like it's really like the most disappointing part of their season has been the Big Ten. Like the last two losses, Rutgers and Penn State, I think are the like two worst losses. I I don't know. I think that like I think the big like I, I know the, that he used to be on the uh, Michigan uh, Maryland coaching staff when they won some national championships. I'm thinking maybe their first one, and then he went to Michigan. And I know that him and Tillman like have some weird bad blood because of that like handshake line last year. But um, All right, I, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I, I agree. I agree with your. I agree with your take that if you're playing the ACC and you say that that was a dumb fucking thing to say, like he put a, a target on his back for that Virginia game, one thousand percent. It was that was one of the dumbest fucking things he could have done, and he could have shut shut have shut his mouth. Now I disagree with you. Where it's like, dude, like imagine like you're at Penn State and you're like, oh yeah, like he called us a fucking bunch bunch of beasts or something. Like I'd be like, okay, like yeah, we are in the Big Ten. Like I think that the big like you should, if you play the Big Ten, you should think the Big Ten's the best conference. Fair, fair. All right. I think my issue was I'm projecting a little bit of my anger that I have just – it's more – I'm more angry just about there being a quote and him making it like – like just saying something of that nature I think gave me Stevenson lacrosse vibes, and I really hate those motherfuckers, especially that head coach. So I, I'm going to digress for the second time this episode, seeing it a little clear. Now I, I just read the full quote. Yeah, I, it's not as bad as I thought it was. It's just I don't love when coaches, like, talk that – like, I, I, I'm a big believer in, like, coaches are supposed to be, like, the professional, like, head down, like, just say what you're supposed to say. Um, but at the same time, I guess, you know, if you're a Michigan guy, you, you, you probably want to go to war for someone like that. So I apologize for taking some of my Cabrini anger and Stevenson hate towards the Michigan. I, I, I'm not going to sell all the Michigan stock, but this weekend I'm selling – because uh, they got their shit kicked in. Wasn't even close. Not at all. Fair. Uh, I I am up? buying my buy sell. I am uh I'm buying all the CJ Curse stock you can absolutely buy. And I know that's like crazy. I don't care if it's selling at fucking like 140. I'm buying it all. He's an absolute beast. He's gonna be an absolute terrific PL player, dominant from day one, I think. Um I I don't I he's not leaving for the draft this year. I know he's not. But if he was, I think he there's a legitimate conversation to be said, like for the number two. Like it wouldn't just be like, oh, you draft him one, who should be two? I think he'd be. I I, I don't even. I, you could even throw him in the number one conversation. Honestly, he's that fucking good. He's like he, yeah. he's a he's a he's a grown man, and he's the best. Curse, Colin, Connor. I think he's gonna be the best one. I hope. Yeah. It, 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 I, I hope. I hope there's some like family competition there, but he. Right now, I've never been so sure that he he physically – his shot is just so good. He can do so many different things. From X, I think you could even put him outside the box if you really wanted him to. He's a good time and room shooter. He's good on the run. He's good coming around X. Good feeder, draws so much attention. His physical tools are there. It, it, he stuns me. Every single time I come, watch him play, he impresses me more and more. I will buy CJ Kerr's stock all day, every day. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, just for anyone who doesn't know out there, CJ Kirst and I believe some other juniors at uh, Cornell, the year the Ivy got canceled, I think they like they did not attend that spring, I believe, if, if, if my memory serves me correctly in talking to CJ. 
So so he's able to stay at Cornell. It's not like he has to – you can't do grad years at the Ivies. Um, so he will be back at Cornell for his, his fourth year. I know he's excited about it. I'm sure some of his buddies are doing the same. It seemed like it was like a group decision to – to sit out that year that got kind of canceled so they could keep their eligibility. Uh, so it would have been cool to maybe see where he ended up. Don't think we'll be seeing TJ's name even in the portal. Um, would love to see Cornell make a run one of these next two years with him. But if he's in the tour in conversation this year, maybe even a finalist, that's two years in a row going into a senior year. Uh, yeah, he's he's the best cursed. I love all the cursed brothers. They'll all say the other one's better than the other. They're the biggest, like, Spider-Man meme, like, pointing at each other. You're the best. You're the best. Um, but I think there's kind of, like, a, an understanding that as far as production uh, in college, even in high school, CJ Kirst is is, is the guy. Um, I, I, I love him. He's a, he's a weapon. Happier buying the stock. I bought it when it was $1.50. I'm rich as hell on CJ Kirst stock. But uh, I'm just happy you're, you're in for the long haul now. I, I know – I know there's not many people we need to turn into believers with, with, with cursed. Yeah. Fair. I agree with you on everything. Now let's dive in. You got to sell by any chance real quick. You sell any oh, stock at fuck. All? Yes. The carrier dome. It's coming to spring. Sell the dome. You don't want to be playing in a dome. Like the dome is cool for like February games. The dome stinks now. Nobody <laughs> wants to play in a dome. Everyone wants to play on the grass fields. I think that the dome like, once it comes, it's like, all right, enough of this shit. Like, we get it. Syracuse has shitty weather. Play outside. I hate playing indoors when it gets, like, do you not agree? I think that's, like, the right take. I've never <clears> – <throat> I've played indoors, obviously, and it sucks because I'm playing in, like, a like a little field. But I've never played in a, do- <clears throat> in a dome like that. I think it'd be sick to play in it once, twice. I'm um, sure it's dope for the Q's guys. But like you said, I mean, lacrosse is a spring sport. Lacrosse is meant to be played in the fucking 70 degree sun, uh, middle of the day. You know, night game's awesome, but you want to be outside. I'm also sure as a goalie, it probably sucks playing in the dome. I'm sure there's no way that that ball's easier to see in the dome than it would be just on like a normal field. So for my goalies out there, I'm sure it sucks. It's cool, but it's not. I'm with you. Get them outside. Let the boy. Let the boys play outside. It's warm enough in fucking upstate New York come come April and May, so I'll sell a little dome with you. I'll, I'll sell dome. Yeah, sell dome. I'll buy dome, but I'll sell the carrier dome. <laughs> now let's talk. You. Let's talk Penn State Rutgers. Uh, let's preview the game. Little pick them. Penn State playing Rutgers. Rutgers plus four. What's the play? I think Penn State could 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 give it to them. Uh, seeing how Maryland handle it's it's plus four. You know what? If I'm Ben, I'll bet I'll bet Rutgers. I can't. I'm in New Jersey. Uh, shout out DraftKings though, but I'll I'll take Rutgers plus four. It's at it's at Rutgers. I like a home team dog. I think they'll fight. You know, conference matchup. You know, who knows? Again, I'm gonna look up how the Big Ten conference works. What about you? Who do you like in that? Yeah, I like Penn State. I like Penn State. Um, Rutgers defense. I think necessary, like, I don't know. I think I'm not even the record Rutgers do that. Penn State offense, like, TJ Malone just, like, really impresses me. So, I'll, I'll take Penn State. I feel like they've had, like, some tough fights, and they're kind of in fight-or-flight mode right now. So, I'll take Penn State on a, a Friday night game. And the rest of the Friday night games are, like, kind of, like, weird. Like, you got, like, Yale, Albany. I can't see that spread, but, like, I have Yale. Shout out Brandau. He's been on an absolute tail, uh, tear. Just – like he has like seven points per game so far this season. Just I mean, like should definitely be a finalist this year for the Tour John. I don't think he should win it, but I think that he should be a finalist for sure. What is what does Yale need to do for him to win it? Like how you said, Edmund, if, if, if Notre four. Dame, you think if Yale makes a Final Four run and he keeps it up, it, it, and he's got a, I, I, uh, let me just see. I mean, his stats are like jump off the table, like appalling. Okay, like I I agree with that, but like so I, I saw like uh, shout out to the guy Dave Shamus who like tweeted out his us his stats in like the past, last like three games. Let me just re like you be okay, like be you good win, but then you got racked up points against like Dartmouth and Hofstra. Now love those lo- love Hofstra. I'm a Hofstra guy, but like we're not like. You're not playing like the thick of the Ivy right here, like the thick of your non-conference. So, like, I wouldn't like brag about like doing doing it against like a Patriot League 
team as like your best competition right there. Fair. I just think I uh, like the Hofstra game. In my opinion, like yeah, Hofstra is not on that level of of some of those Ivy teams, but like it was a close game, and he's still like a just casually like. I think scoring nine points against even like the worst team on your schedule is like a oh shit like that. Even if it was easy, I still think it's like like all these Ivy teams. Do you think Matt Brandau is the best? Do you think Matt Brandau is the best player in the country? No, but I don't think that's what the. I don't know necessarily if that's. I, I just don't think that's what the it award goes is. To the most out. It goes. It doesn't go. It's not who has the best stats. But it's also not the best player in the country because we that. David Seamus guy, uh, shout out to him. He showed us that it's gone to, I believe, in the last 15 years, uh, someone in the final four or the finals, and the only outliers, I think, were the Thompson brothers. It's the like Tawarton, The Tawarton Award is an annual award for the most outstanding American college across men's and women's player. It, it, I also don't get the, the – like, what does that mean, outstanding versus value? I don't – I think Jordy said something about outstanding and valuable, and I didn't get it. I didn't. I don't. It's know not what, valuable. It's no, not what, valuable. What's the difference, though? Like, is it so? It's, so I would it's, say, I would say that if you're talking valuable, you could probably. Make, yeah, this is where we get tricky. You want to talk some vocabs and some uh, yeah defining words? I'd say that Brandau is probably the most valuable player in the country. Like no, Yale is not Yale without Brandau. But if you're talking to me, who's the most outstanding? Like, it's like Schellenberger is sharing the ball, ball with elite talent around him. Like, he is causing, like, through rotations, like, whipping it to uh, McKay Millen, who's then whipping it to Griffin Schutz, who splits it off the dodge. And, like, that's technically, like, getting the defense moving. Like, that doesn't show up on the stat sheet. Like, I think that, like, these teams, like, you got Brennan, Pat, and um, Shelly, who have to split yeah. split what's going on on offense, like, so much. Like, I, like, I think Kirst is has been better than like not better. I think I, I'd much rather have Kirst win it. Like, would you say? Would you th- do you think Kirst is better than Brando? I, I think I think Kirst is like you said. I, I think, think he Kirst might be. I think he, he might be. I know. I agree with you. I think he might be the most valuable. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, like I think I think I think Kirst, Schellenberger, and Brando O'Neill, and, and maybe even Ka- I think Kavanaugh is like the, the, like this tiniest like of slivers behind those three in my opinion but i think that next tier is Kavanaugh, and then i think brandow's right i think brandow's a top five offensive player in the country i do too and i think if you put brandow like you said like if you put brandow on an offense with mccabe millen and the midfielders that virginia has um and, i agree or a team like duke like he's i think he's still gonna blow up the stat sheet but like you see teams like like when these teams like when virginia plays uh, a team that's not great, you know. If Schellenberger went out, Schellenberger did go out and get eight points, and I and we tipped our cap to him there. I just think every team plays shitty teams. So you can't like. I don't like the narrative like, oh, well, he scored these points against all these other teams. It's like, well, he's still going off against the good teams. Like, I just want to try to get a. Let's see some of his big games. All right, so three points against Penn State, five against Denver, seven against Cornell, eight points against Harvard. Uh, like those are to score eight and yes, seven. Against, yes, Cornell's not Cornell's defense isn't great, but Harvard, Harvard, then that was when Harvard was playing really fucking well. They still are, but I just think it's, it's just tough for me to like. He doesn't do anything better than the the top three guys to me. Nothing. And I know yeah. it's like it's it's it, it, it's tough vocabulary. I'm t- I I think that we're splitting hairs here. I think he's I think he deserves to be in the top four finalist. I don't think he should win. And, and, and then I just have a question about out- he's robbing so- he is robbing then then like you're giving like w- like there's nothing. If you put him on Virginia, Virginia is not better. If you put Connor Schellenberger on Yale, they're probably better. Do you really think so? Like how much? Yes. Be- like, I, I think Schellenberger is better than Brandau. But I think, like, that's where I don't understand, though. Like, I'm judging that based off of, like, my eyes and, like, what I know about lacrosse. Is that how the awards – like, if, if stats don't matter or don't drive the award, then, like, I just feel like it's kind of, okay, well, if you're not on one of the top – if you're not the best player – Yeah, I agree. The it's, it's, the most out, it's, it's the most outstanding player. It's not the best stats award. 
I know, but I don't get the word outstanding. That's where I'm so confused. Like, like it, it should have went. It should have went to. It should have went to Kavanaugh last year. I mean, it, it is. It's just whoever makes the final four in the final championship. Like that's, you have to be. That's yeah, Okay, so we're on. You have, we're on the most, you, you have to be the most outstanding. You have to be the most outstanding player on like a top four team in the country. Like that's why I said if he if he makes the final four if he makes the final four without uh without like Leo Johnson and I think it's Bragg that's out Lions, like Lions or something yes Lions they'll be like I th- I think there's definitely a conversation for, to to be made all right fair fair I just the the the, to, the, the way we talk about to, to, the the tour Don reminds me a little bit of like. You know the the NFL MVP and, and NFL offensive players years. Like I feel like it's not as of it's not an open discussion to everyone. It's like your team your team has to be good, which I don't necessarily think is fair. If your team sucks and you're a fucking nobody on fucking the 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 bottom thirty teams in the country and you're putting up you know seven points a game, yeah, you probably don't deserve to win it. But as far as being on one of the Ivies, where we talk about the Ivies are pretty fucking good this year. I just and and then outside of the Ivy League, they play a pretty decent schedule. I just think he's at least not getting the wrecking. The, he hasn't been talked about the way I think he should be. The most I've heard about him is from that guy on Twitter who tweets as he's diehard Yale, but I love him riding for his guys. But I don't see Brandau anywhere besides like a couple player of the weeks. Like there's no talk about him being. I think it's. I think he has outlier scores. Like you look, like looking at the full like sheet. Like yes, he. A lot of his games are just compare. Are like compare. Like I don't think Brent should win it this year. Just for the record, I. I do think it's. I think it should be cursed. Is the finals? I think it should be cursed. I think it should be Brandau. I think it should be Shelley. Can I just say one thing to you? I agree what? with you. I agree with you. In three games against, against Harvard, Cornell, and Penn. He scored 30, sorry, 29 points against Harvard, Cornell, and Penn. Insane. That's to me is like, like, I don't know if, I don't know, I don't, I'm not confident that Schellenberger can do that. I think Schellenberger's better. But see, like, that's, think, that's, that's, that's where I, just, I don't, I don't, like, like, Shelly doesn't need the ball as much as his stick as Brandau does for the, for the yellow offense. That's fair. Uh, yeah, I guess I see what you're like, saying. Uh, exactly. Like, like, Shelly, like, just by him having the ball, he causes so much attention that when he beats his defender, swings it, like, it gives the third guy in that, like, in that passing attack, like, like the shot or the assist or whatever. Like, he might not get, like, I believe in hockey assists. I believe that people, like, that get the offense humming don't get enough credit for, like, how good they are on offense. Like, Brandau is very good, and he'll be the steal, like he'll be a steal in the draft where he comes in right away. He's good. It's like, oh, really? The really good college cross player is good in the PLL. Like, yeah, no shit. But I do think that like, I I don't think I I get, I get very I've gotten mad about this at high, since high school with people that like I, I don't think that people that that start the offense get enough credit for how good they are just because the stats don't show up on the paper. That's fair. That's fair. Again, that's why I think I I do think Schellenberger is like one or two. Like I think it's him and O'Neill. And, and, and curse. It's really hard to say, but I, I do agree that Schellenberger does a lot more than the stats she shows. D- does Brandon, does Brandon O'Neill get that same tip of the cap as Schellenberger? Does he drive the offense like that? Or is he more of like, when he's not producing, he's not producing. Yeah. I think Schellenberger for my money, it's hard to not say fucking O'Neill, but like, no, I think I, I'm a Shelly guy. I, I think, I think if, if you want to talk that, we can talk that. Like it, we, we, I, was, I meant to bring it up in the Duke Virginia game, but like, if you have the number one pick, I'm if I'm Denver, I'm taking Connor Schellenberger. I mean, I think he he, I think he brings more to the a little bit more to the offense as far as passing is concerned than O'Neal. And you but look at I what like you, a bully. you have to look at what Denver you have to look at what Denver has too. Like I think that like with Sudan, when they're very good, they have like he, he has like someone like Brendan Nickturn who like you know now is with, like the army and like he has an elite ex attackman. They traded away Morrill. Like I think that Connor Schellenberger comes in and takes over that ex attack spot, and they're they he's playing like with Wisnowskis. Like they're they're just dominant from from the get go. And you know he you can put you can put Shelley anywhere in the fucking field, and you come with Brennan too. Like he showed that in the World Games, but I just think that Connor has a more extensive skill set where. Brennan has more extensive physical traits. You're 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 drafting a physical specimen. Yeah. 
I, I, I just think maybe it's. I think at the end of the day, it goes down to fit. I think uh, it's gonna I, be. I think it's just gonna be O'Neal. I think it's almost like he, because he, like you said, he's so physically more dominant and like gifted as far as sizes. Like, so it's gonna be hard for them to leave him on, on the table. But I mean, if you're the if you're the one or two, whoever's got this, I don't know who has the second pick. Um, I mean, you got you're you're, you're kind of in a win win. You're gonna get one of those two guys, and they are like world class players. So. It'll be fun. I mean, it's it's like a it's almost like an impossible argument to like argue because when you argue for one guy, you're arguing against like just someone, the only other guy in the world who's at that same level as them. It's hard for me to really like nail it into who they're going to get because like you look at their attack right now. Yeah, cross. They got De- they got Deso, who I would think would come in as the. They might be looking at him as like. The ex attackman, maybe somebody out of, out of the box. You got Cross. You got Dylan Gregar. And you got Logan Wisnowskis on the left. Like, it wouldn't make sense to me for you to get Brennan if you have Logan. And I know, like, you're just, you just, like, it's at, at the end of the day, when you draft, you just should draft the best player available, it, it, like, who you think is, and worry about everything later. But I, I don't know. I just think that, like, in the PLL, like, it's not like there's that big of a drop off, in my opinion, from Connor to Brennan. I agree. I agree. Uh, I just think the needs. It would be interesting then to see like what they do on their right hand side, but I don't know. Maybe. I mean, fucking. Maybe Rob, they just have two lefties. Maybe they just have two left. I don't know. I mean, you can also just have you can potentially bump one of the lefties to to X and then run like you said, run the. Yeah, two but left. like it doesn't seem like I think you need a distributor back there. And it's not like Brennan or Logan's game is really like an on-ball attacker. Like, I mean, Brennan's is, but like not like a distributor. Like, Brennan's looking to go. Yeah, that's fair. I think one of the things Brennan actually is like, like one thing he's not good at is really like passing after like drawing the slot. Yeah, and I think that's what Schellenberger, like Schellenberger's ability to dish is like insane. And that's what I, I love a good disher. Like, don't get me wrong, a a score like Brendan O'Neill who like bullies people and like, can legitimately shoot a ball like through a goalie's fucking lacrosse stick. It's sick. And he's a world class player, which is like I like I think a more complete player is Schellenberger in a way. So I agree. We'll let's just do- it, let's- it'd be cool to see Schellenberger go first. I think that would shock a lot of people. Maybe not, maybe not you, because you're looking at it a little deeper than most people probably would. I think the average lacrosse fan would be like, what the fuck, Brandon O'Neill didn't go first. Like I thought he was a lock when I Yeah, I think it is. I think the last time people were – people have been shocked before. I think that when Logan went first, people were kind of shocked. But let's just dive into the rest of these games. We're, we're, we're over the hour mark, so let's just close this up. Uh, North Carolina, Notre Dame, Notre Dame minus six. What's the play? I'll take uh, so many goals, man. But fuck. I'll take Notre Dame. I uh, – I don't know. I'll take Notre Dame since I ride with them. North Carolina is probably going to find a way to cover like they did last week. So that's a tough one. Six and a half is a lot of goals. I think Notre Dame is going to handle them. But, you know, you got to win by seven to cover. So that's a lot. What about you? Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I'm going to take Notre Dame. I have to. I mean, I just legitimately have to. <laughs> um, like, there's just – I can't say, like, I wanted to say North Carolina plus six. It just couldn't come out of my mouth. <laughs> Denver, Providence, Providence plus five and a half. Providence, love Ryan with the Friar boys. Those guys Fried get up. Um, yeah, we, we, we're, we're Friar guys on this podcast. Duke's way more than myself, but, you know, I'm on the back of that train sort of waving to the guys in the front. So shout out the Friars there. Be cool to see them keep building something special. Nova, Marquette, Marquette plus three. <sighs> Give me Nova. Again, fuck you guys about my school, but you'll cover. I don't think yeah. – Mar- Marquette's window, I think they had a chance to be, like, pretty good. I think it's kind of – it's kind of closing on them. Yeah, Marquette's – once Amplo left, they're still trying to figure figure things out in Milwaukee uh, since Amplo left. Nova's face-off guy, Coppola, GC product, shout-out Justin, went down. Nova's kind of struggled from the X since he went down. Nova's talent is like, they're not great, 
when it's compared to like the rest of like the country, but they're way better than St. John's and Marquette. Like I, the, the bottom of the Big East, like Marquette and St. John's are just like not very good in my opinion. I'll take Villanova minus three. They might struggle to get possessions. I don't think Villanova is very good this year, but I do think they're good enough to get this cover. I'll take Villanova minus three. I'm with you. We're riding so far, Dukes. Maryland Hopkins rivalry game. Hop minus one and a half. Give me the hop. Oh, it's at hop. Uh, yeah, give me the hop. I hate that it's minus one and a half. I just want for once, once in my fucking life, I want a cross line to be a natural pick em. It just never happens. I never get to get like a, a, a just a, all right, one team's going to win, one team's going to lose, pick a side. You always have to give that extra goal. Uh, as the sport grows, hopefully we'll get more of those. But I'm going to take minus one and a half. I would love for this game to be just a pick them. Minus a half. It is what it is. But I'll take the one and a half. That's a dangerous game, though. I could see it being a one-goal game, and I'm just fucking pissed on Saturday. I hope you're right, because my play of the weekend is Maryland plus one and a half. <laughs> play of the weekend, dude. Play of the weekend. Play of the weekend. All right. All right. On the Tillman train. I respect it. Penn, Princeton, Princeton minus one and a half. Princeton hoping for a, uh, a rebound. Bounce back game. What's the play here? I think Penn. I think Penn's good. They've been fighting. I bet against them a couple of times. Hasn't worked. I bet with them and it worked. Um, I'll take Penn plus one and a half. Maybe even I, that could be a, my money line. Probably good value there. Probably plus like 140 or something. So we'll see. I will I'll have to go to New York to bet that though. Shout out DraftKings. Last game we'll talk about Michigan, Ohio State, Ohio State minus one and a half. Guessing cool. you're going to take Ohio State minus one and a half. I kind of been like dogging both these teams. I talked a lot of shit on Michigan. Was a little too mean. Oh, Ohio State was easy, by the way. Yeah, I felt like a fucking idiot. Yeah. You were on that. You kind of like it was like the we were reviewing the games. It was just like the Dukes is a winner segment. It should be called. Like you were just like, yeah, covered this game, covered that game, covered this one. Well, I, I, I you, only it was. I mean, it was because that was one because I feel like that was the first weekend really like sat down, gambled my ass off on like like eight games. Like, game, like you know, I always give out picks on here because yeah. it's just like part of like white guy, white dude talking lacrosse on a podcast. You have to talk some <laughs> shit, but like really locking in and watching was like that was my first time. And I it, like the, I think like like the the Q's game hurt and. The other one on Saturday hurt. But overall, it wasn't you that bad. Harvard. Harvard. But yeah, besides yeah. that, overall, it was good. Yeah. I mean, you you were hot. Um, Thanks. So, <laughs> um, Thanks. So, yeah. Shout out to Dukes for last weekend. Hopefully, this weekend goes a little bit better for Nest. We uh, we will see. Starts with Ohio State. Yeah. I I mean, yeah. I, I, I didn't even make a pick. I still don't fucking know who I – I don't know. I'm just going to plead the fifth on that one. I don't like that game. I kind of talked about both teams. So, we'll see. All right, you got anything else, Curse of the Week? <clears throat> no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put out a video for Curse of the Week. I want to do a deeper dive, make sure, you know, the committee's still in talks about who it should be. Don't want to just do a gimmick, you know, at the end and have it not be worthwhile. Um, so, I'll put out a video, a little separate video, probably outdoors, the outdoor Curse of the Week. But um, no, just I'm excited. Like I said in the beginning of the episode, this is when the cross gets fun. Um, just why I got you. <laughs> We're going to have to do a deep dive one day at Cabrini's conference. Th- they're approaching uh, 24 years without a loss in their conference. Um, Cabrini? Cabrini, they hold the longest. I, I, I have to do a deeper dive, but I believe the longest streak of any sport in any conference of continuous wins. Uh, they won today 29 to 1. Uh, the teams they're playing aren't great. You know, they're still playing the cross. Shout out those boys. But yeah, there needs to be a deep dive one day in Cabrini's conference dominance. It's not something crazy where they're they're the most dominant team in the world. It's just they're in a conference with teams that aren't great. You know, if you're listening to this podcast, you're one of those teams. I apologize. But like who? Who's in it? Is Catholic? Uh, no. Cat like Cat Catholic's not it. Cat Catholic would would have probably Dude, these schools are made up. Yeah, are you looking? Like Gwynedd Mercy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Marymount? 
yeah, we'd come out. Newman? You know, you'd shake, Newman? Yeah, you'd shake their Barry hands. Chat, oh, hold on. Shout out Newman. That's where Chase Frazier, uh, Frazier, yes. however you it, that's where he did went. He light you, did he light you up? He scored a goal on me, Dukes, from like 30 yards out, and it was a fucking laser. Like, I mean, so, like, did he just go? Like, what? what's the story there? I think he's – I think he bounced around. I, I I followed him on Instagram for a while. I think I actually, like, did a, a deep scroll on his Instagram once and it looked like he might have bounced around colleges a little bit and then ended up at you, Newman. You Instagram stalked him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did a deep <laughs> – yeah, it was a – I mean, I see like him – Like a girl you hooked up with at the Jersey Shore. You just insta-stalked. Yeah, like he – well, he scores these goals in the, in the NLL that are, like, legitimately, like, number one sports center plays. I'm like, dude, this motherfucker – Played on Newman, who we would legitimately beat twenty six to two, and like he'd score two goals that were like just piss me. So like he had one highlight goal against us that was like he like broke some kid's ankles, one of our like really good defensemen, and just laser. It was like the most disrespectful goal someone ever scored on me. It hurt so bad. Like we were never gonna lose, but I was like, dude, I just got got so bad by this kid, and like I think we knew he was going. I think he might have been drafted at that point into one of the leagues. Or like we just knew he was really fucking good for no reason, and he's had a dude. He's had a really good pro career. He won a PLL championship. He's won. He's really good. He won an NLL championship with the I think the Bandits won it last year, maybe. So yeah, I think, I think he's really good. Some of the some of the fans for the NLL can be pesky pricks, but I, I do like the league. It's good lacrosse. A lot of uh, similarities to the field game. So. But yeah, we we'll we'll do a deep dive one day on that conference. It's pretty remarkable. I don't think we have to. I think we get it. <laughs> no, no, we need to do. I, I want to run the numbers. It's like a, okay, we we can run the numbers. We can run the numbers. I thought you meant like Cabrini's dominance. Like I'm reading it. Like you can look this up. Like you're right. Like the the scores are twenty nine to one. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Like it's it's and and I was I wasn't shout worried. out to everybody that's still playing the game at this point. Like if you're playing the game going to these schools, like tip my cap. Like yeah. We we played a team once, Dukes, uh, in 2017. They went on a 67 game losing streak from oh, 2017 yeah. until this year. Shout out Keystone College, back on the map. They got a win this year. Imagine having a cross program with 67 straight losses. 67, Nuts. not just to us, to every fucking team they played. Are you guys gonna make the tournament? Yeah, so that's the that's the selling point of Cabrini. You always make the tournament because you roll your conference. So the, Cabrini will be there round one of the tourney. Would love to see him punch a team in the mouth. I double, triple dog dare someone to sleep on Cabrini because you will get fucked. Um, I'll be there loud and proud. Love the Cabrini boys. I, I'm I'm going to be triple, quadruple crying the amount Dukes was crying when Dayton won their first round game. Again, those are passionate tears, real men tears. Um, if you love something that much, it'll make you cry tears of joy or tears of sadness. Um, I will be doing both no matter what. Guaranteed. The most I probably Lynchburg shit pumped you guys this year. Who did? Lynchburg. Shit on us. I know. I know. I Lynch- Lynchburg Lynchburg's had Cabrini's number the last few years. My my re- my recruiting class was four and against Lynchburg. When I went back, I got smoked by them. And Damn. they still get shit for it. I mean, Lynchburg's good. They're, but that's not – I don't know if Lynchburg's a Final Four team. So that's what worries me about Cabrini going into the tourney. But I'll, I'm ride or die for these guys. I think they can – I think they can give anyone a fight. We'll know – when they when Salisbury comes into town, that'll be the final test. That, that'll be the last big battle. That's next weekend. Uh, if you go to Salisbury, fuck you. And, uh, you know, fuck all your national championships. It is what it is. Undefeated too. I think Salisbury has like a, a two-year winning streak going on right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm always gonna cross for our guy. No, no, you had no. What the fuck is he a Long Island guy? No. Good. Well, then you don't. You don't know. You don't know. You're out on the ride. Only one thing ride. Across. Nice guy on the field. Surprisingly nice. But fuck him. He scored so many goals on me. He scored a game winner on me in overtime. I don't fuck with that. He ended my career. And I, yeah, I mean, he, he bitch made me, I have no problem saying it. I mean, he, he had my number. Um, but again, I'm going to get his, maybe, maybe, a, maybe a goalie challenge with cross one day. Who knows? Maybe I'll get my oh, redemption. Yeah. Do it. Well, both will. All right. Um, that's all we got. Follow us on all the socials at the crease dive, Duke's nest. 
it's all we really have. Um, thank you guys for tuning in for some reason. Um, <laughs> peace and love to your health. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Love you guys.